Hello YouTube. My main editing computer is not working at the moment, so I have some words that I prepared to say on the camera. Today marks 14 years since the passing of Ralph René, and of course this year marks 30 years since the original publication of his book, NASA Mooned America. His book was written in response to NASA misusing his name to promote what he believed was going to be their next big hoax. René was one of many reputable people contacted by the Rand Corporation for any free ideas to give to NASA for space travel. At least one of his ideas was approved by NASA for a manned mission to Mars, and his name was featured prominently in their publication, America at the Threshold. By this point, René had begun to doubt that the Apollo missions were real. Now they were talking about building a base on the moon and sending people to Mars. Back then, such pipe dreams were collectively known as the Space Exploration Initiative. This ultimately evolved into the Artemis program currently underway. At the time of my producing this video, the unmanned Artemis 1 is on its way back from the moon and scheduled to make a splashdown on December 11. Coincidentally, Starship has been scheduled for its first unmanned orbital test flight later this month. This is important because Starship has been selected as the lunar lander for Artemis 3 currently scheduled for a landing on the moon in 2025. It has also been selected for Dear Moon, the first private circumlunar mission, the crew of which has just been announced. As if in response to Ralph Rene's conviction that the Apollo astronauts could not have survived the radiation on a flight to the moon, the spacecraft chosen for these missions is stated to have a solar storm shelter. But as of December 2022, SpaceX is still yet to release any diagrams of Starship's interior, nor have they provided any details as to what the shelter consists of. By his own admission, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk has stated before the Royal Astronomical Society in 2012 that the radiation problem is such that you need several meters of water to shield yourself. And later during the 2017 ISS R&D conference, Musk conceded that, contrary to what he originally thought, the radiation from solar flares are not directional due to the sun's magnetic field lines carrying the particles off in all directions, thus necessitating protection on four or five sides. So Elon Musk has no excuse for his starship providing anything less than a cabin surrounded by several meters of water, or at the very least, building the propellant tanks around such a cabin as a makeshift shield. Even with that shelter, it remains to be seen whether the required super heavy rocket is up for the task. With 33 engines in the first stage alone, one cannot help but get flashbacks of the ill-fated Soviet N1 moon rocket. In any case, for the month of December, we will be in for quite the revelation. Not only will we finally see whether or not Starship is a viable launcher, but if the Artemis 1 successfully lands, we will have some interesting radiation readouts to look forward to. Because on November 22nd, 2022, just six days into the Artemis 1 mission, the Earth-Moon system was struck by the particles of an M-class coronal mass ejection that spouted just three days earlier. Additional coronal mass ejections struck the Earth-Moon system on December 8 and 9. The solar proton fluxes would no doubt have been recorded by the crash dummies of Water Artemis 1, each carrying radiation detectors. And since the Artemis has three times the shielding as the Apollo Command Module, this should put things into proper perspective. In all likelihood, don't be surprised if Artemis 2 and 3 become more unmanned tests, and the launch date for manned missions gets pushed further and further into the future. Because as much as I believe the private space sector will be the way of the future, it is overly optimistic to think that Starship will be ready to send astronauts around the moon in time for the private circumlunar mission next year or even the 2025 landing date scheduled for Artemis 3. In the words of Ralph René, until they can build an engine that will lift a life capsule surrounded by two meters of water or the equivalent mass of lead, they don't even dare go through the Van Allen radiation belts.